good morning. Welcome to C3, and we are in a different setting this morning. We're still at the ministry house, but we decided to do it inside. So hopefully the sound's a little louder, a little better, and, um, but it's gorgeous out here. And uh, we want to thank you for coming out and uh, being part of our uh, Bible study today. And once again, just let me say this, C3, for those of you that have just uh, are joining us or will be seeing this later on in the week, you're saying, what in the world is a C3? Well, C3 is, uh, we came up with, it's, it's, it stands for the three C's, Coffee, Christ, and Conversation. And we had it out, we used to do this at Starbucks and then at a donut shop, and because of the coronavirus, we find ourselves doing it now via Facebook. And so we're here at our ministry house on our church property. And uh, so we're glad that you're here today. So for those of you that are joining us, once again, um, make sure you uh, say hello to us. Join in uh, on the conversation, the discussion, feedback. Angelia will be reading your remarks. And uh, we will be reading them off. Um, so although we're not at our trackside donuts with 20 plus people, interacting we're doing it this way and you can interact with us by way of facebook good so, morning lyle and becky and al ridley is joining us you must have made it to illinois yeah al <laughs> al went up there and uh last week and he says what was i thinking it's 29 degrees <laughs> what so, were you thinking what were you al? Think? i asked al i said al, al obviously you didn't pray about it so, <laughs> and and he, he wrote me back and said whatever <laughs> and good morning to robert thank you for your faithfulness online yeah very good and um so today we have joe jackson with us and um joe and liz they've been part of our church for um, i won't say how long it's been a while eight, 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 years. eight years yeah <laughs> and um i know it's been over five but i couldn't remember but anyhow they've been with us and uh we've been praying for joe joe's uh having some, uh, little, some issues, and so we've been praying for Joe, and uh, so continue to remember Joe and Liz in your prayers uh, as Joe's been going to the doctor and going through those hoops, which is not a whole lot of fun, but uh, we want to remember Joe, and thank you, Joe, for joining us today. And, of course, we've got our dynamic youth and children's pastor. Our dynamic you know, duo. Uh, duo. <laughs> and uh, and they, they, they helped us get on Facebook and all the uh, savvy stuff that makes us look good and smart. So anyhow, they're the brains behind all that. Go ahead and take your outline out. And basically what we're doing is we're going over the sermon. Um, <clears throat> that's the purpose of C3. You know, basically us pastors and teachers, you know, on a Sunday morning, it's lecture style, preaching style, teaching style. And so we're just kind of giving it out, you know. And a lot of times, if, you, if you're like me on the other side of the, in, from, on the other side of the pulpit in the pew all these years, you know, I'm going, what do I meant by that? Huh, I never thought of that. I had a question about that. You know, that don't make sense. You know, so you don't have any way of uh, you know, downloading or dialoguing. And so this is what, this is the reason why we're doing this. Taking the sermon and, uh, and then drilling down deeper and just having a discussion around it. So go ahead and take your notes out. Uh, Robert has put the notes online. You can just tap on that link. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, And Robert. good morning to Shay, Trish, Kathy, Gail, and Terry Moore. Very good. Well, let's get into it. Uh, let's open up in prayer. Can we do that? Father, we ask your blessings to be on our time together. We pray, Lord, that you would be with us as we open up your word. Let your word come alive in our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your word has encouraged us during this time. It has fed us, Lord, and strengthening our faith. Let that happen today, God, as we get into um, your, your scriptures today. And let us grow. Let it increase our faith, God. Let it bring encouragement and during these times that we're facing. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Well, I'm um, starting a new series. In fact, we just, we kind of call it God's Encouraging Words for Anxious Times. And uh, and so these, these have been some very anxious times globally and also it's hit America. And so here we are doing things that are just night and day. If somebody told us in January that a virus would paralyze the entire planet. In January, after Christmas of this year, we look at them and go, you're nuts. That'll never happen. But here we are. And so we find ourselves in this in these times. And so today, Sunday, I wanted to talk about um, how to pray in a crisis. 
And I think there's no doubt about it. We're in a crisis, you know. The, the whole country and the world is in a crisis. And we, we're reliving this crisis every week. We're looking for it to get better and better. And we've watched our economy tanking and, you know, so many people losing jobs and economically it's starting to stress people out and, and health-wise and just all that goes on with that. And, um, and so I just felt led to say, hey, we're in a crisis. How do we pray in a crisis? And Daniel, there's a lot of prayers in the Bible. And I just wanted to, uh, I, I enjoyed Daniel's prayer. Daniel chapter 9. If you have your Bibles, turn with Daniel to Daniel chapter 9. It's on your outline there. And Daniel has this prayer that really uh, talks about, he was in crisis. And he, he, this prayer is written out how Daniel prayed his attitude towards that, and then we saw Gabriel come and actually give him the answer towards the end of that. That's, that, that's a message. That's a hand-delivered answer to prayer straight from the throne of God. Not just an angel, an archangel came down. Angel delivered. Angel delivered, that's right. <laughs> and so we see that. And so we see this prayer written out. So, huh, here's a prayer that God, I would actually see an answer to immediately almost, and so we kind of got into that prayer. So that's the context of, of why I selected that prayer, and so we want to get into it today and um, just look at Daniel's prayer. And there were six steps that I saw um, in that prayer that I, this kind of stood out to me, why this prayer became so dynamic and why it got the attention of God. And Daniel kind of gives us some insight into his is thinking on that in Daniel chapter 9. So let me just start out with the group. How do you personally respond to a crisis? I mean, we've all had our crisis in our life. You're too young to have, you might have one or two crises, maybe. <laughs> so that just means their answer is going to be different. Yeah, their answer is going to be different. <laughs> but I think, I think uh, you, get, you get some life under your belt, uh, you get crisis. Crisis happens. Joe, you're going through a crisis right now. Yeah, life is that way. Yeah. It has it up and down and yep. the challenges that you have. And the basic thing is that, you know, sometimes you're wondering, you know, what, where's God in this whole thing? What's going on? What's happening? Why is this happening to me? You know, why is this all going on? And, you know, the, the basic thing is that as you're doing this, you got to eventually get a hold of yourself and say, it's God. He's in charge. Mm -hmm. You're not. Mm -hmm. um, and my whole crisis right now is one of those crazy things, and we're not going to get the detail of it, but... The bottom line is every move we've been making keeps saying, you're not in charge, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am. Yeah. You don't have a clue what's going on and whatever's going to happen, yeah. it's going to be on my time. And I keep getting reminded that through this, through this whole thing. And listen, I keep praying about it. I keep saying, Lord, what do you want us to do? And he said, I'll let you know when I won't let you know. Yeah. And that's how it's gone for us. So, so you're saying for you right now and what you, uh, when a crisis hits and you're, you're in one right now, Health-wise, um, your immediate turn, you turn immediately to God. Mm. And in fact, Becky says she goes to go to the throne room of God. <laughs> and that's, you know, so how do you respond to a crisis? I think us as believers, we kind of have that natural bit and go, oh God. Mm. You know, you yeah. get the phone call or you get the letter, you get the email. And whatever that crisis might be. And um, all of a sudden you find yourself getting some bad news. And, um, and so what do you do as an individual? You know, I, I had some thoughts on that, Russ, mm -hmm. as you were preaching Sunday, because I kept thinking, you know, we as Christians have such a blessing to have the Word of God, mm -hmm. to have each other, to have the Spirit moving us to do this. What about the ones that don't? Right. Where, where do, where do yeah. they get something? And my answer that, as I've been studying this yeah. since Sunday, my answer is we get it. They get it mm -hmm. from us. Yeah, they watch how that's we right. respond. That's right, and I think that that's the one thing about how I respond to crisis. Uh, you know, it just amps up our responsibility as Christians and uh, those of us who are called by God to, to get the message out there mm -hmm. that there is hope and uh, that Christ can help during this situation. You know, I think it was Mr. Rogers who said, during a crisis, look for the helpers. So instead of being... Um, afraid or what do we do next look for the helpers and in our case it's how do we help right. we're, we're the helpers mm -hmm. so in, in this situation we need to bring hope whether it's bringing canned goods to um, 
to to the ministry house so we can deliver them to the, the different organizations that need them. Or whether it's just making that phone call or uh, preaching online. How do we get the ultimate helper to the ones who need the help? <laughs> that's right. That's right. How, how can we be the hands and feet of Jesus during this crisis? Yeah, exactly. And I've had people call me and say, you know, what's going on? What's happening related to it? And it just hit me. I, I have a responsibility. And my responsibility, which is all of ours as, as Christian brothers and sisters of Christ, is I need to give them the peace, the joy, the hope, the purpose of God in this whole thing, which is where you were going to mm -hmm. us in this That's whole right. message, what God was bringing to them. Of course, mm -hmm. Jeremiah, that passage that Daniel quoted, mm -hmm. was a passage where he kept saying, God was right. saying to Jeremiah, right. I got a plan for you, sucker. I tried. Yeah. You know, yeah. I got yeah. something yeah. like that, but you don't know what it is, but I got a plan for you. It's a good plan. And, <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is what we need to be saying. Yeah. There is a plan out there, Christ. You may not know what it is. You know, over a hundred years ago, the whole world did the same thing. That Spanish yeah, uh, flu, flu yeah. whatever mm -hmm. that thing was, it was a time. And they had all this, you know, stuff happening. Yeah. But you didn't have the communication. You didn't know what was going on. But it was, ex if you look back and look at it, exactly. it was exactly the same thing. Right. Well, a lot of people say, well, you know, that was back then. That was a hundred years ago. Well, look at the technology we've got now. We're not any better. Yeah. <laughs> if anything, but you're right. worse off. We have right. more knowledge. We have more stuff that we're dealing with. And the basic thing is, what I'm hearing, and this is what scares, mm -hmm. this is where we've got to be real careful, I think, my thinking. We have to be careful with the fact that there's many people are now saying, man is going to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. Humanity is the answer. And it's good that people want him to be loving and caring, but they're not doing it from the love of God. They're doing the love of man. Yeah. And they're saying that man's going to solve the problem. And my message to me and to them has to be, sorry, it's going to be solved in God's yeah. time and in God's way, not Joe Jackson, not anybody else. It's that way. And that's the message i got to keep getting out there. And I think what, coming up, we meet a lot of people. I mean, we talk about, we're, we're, we're in our circle of friends, are Christians. So, you know, and if you've been in the book, and the Word of God in your, in your spiritual life, as long as we have you, you naturally your go-to is God. You know, you go deep into your faith. But how about people that that don't have that relationship with God? I mean, you know, there's a lot of people out there. They're biting their nails to the cud. You know, they're freaking out, and the stress is way over the top. So, what's our response to them? I mean, what an opera. This is what I hear. What an opportunity for the church and for the Christian to make their light shine. Somebody says the stars shine the brightest when it's the darkest. And we are in a dark world, so who's the stars? The shining, it's God flowing, the light of God flowing through us as individuals. So, what do we, I th how, how do we instruct people? I would say, first of all, this, have you prayed lately? I mean, you can go to, to prayer. You know, a lot of people don't even think about that. Mm -hmm. They go pray, you know? Or, you know, like one guy says, you mean it's come to that? You know, and so, you know, like that's the last resort. So I think that's a great way of beginning to lead people and say, listen, let's have a word of prayer with you. I want to pray with you. I'll be praying for you. And we serve a big God, our God, your God, my God, and, and your God as you grow in your walk with God. Watch you do some things. So let's pray together. And that can, can that little bit of bridging that gap to a person that's very distressed uh, as we pray for that person, it gives them, it can give them relief immediately. It can give them peace of mind. Because every time I pray with people over the phone, you know, during this time, they go, wow, I needed that. You know. So I think that's a that's that's, that's a beautiful way of introducing people to the relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Prayer. Simple I, though. You're right. I, I want to see what Pastor Travis and the Stephanie think because at the, we have, um, teenagers at our house and uh, when it first came out the teenagers were going I'm not scared I'm not scared of that corona and then now I said yesterday to our youngest and I said hey do you want to go to uh, this store with me really quick and she goes are you crazy I'm not getting that corona <laughs> so I just want to see how are, how are you uh, reacting to the crisis and helping the teenagers and kids through it yeah I, I think for me, especially at the beginning, my first, uh, this isn't as serious, right? And at the beginning, like, I don't know. And, 
And for me, a lot of times when something pops up with crisis, I go to question mode. I'm like, what's happening? How long is this going to go? Is what, what have I done to cause this? What can I do to fix this? So I'm like, just throwing questions out, trying to understand every aspect that I can. Um, and first of all, especially go to the Word, go to prayer, go to leadership, go to Pastor Russell, how are you going to uh, run the church? What are you going to do? What steps are you going to take? And then trying to take that and move it into the youth setting as well so the church as a whole is moving in the same direction. Mm -hmm. um, how are you managing small groups? All right, let's do that. How are you dealing with people? All right, let's deal with the youth students in a similar fashion so we're moving as one group. But I've, I've learned that sometimes we can't understand everything. I can't know it all. I don't know why it's happening. I think like Joe was saying, people only know so much. We hear things from news. They only know so much. But God knows everything. Mm -hmm. And we may not all have all the answers. I remember it was a little bit into the, the virus and the youth hey, you want to go hang out or do this? And it's like, yes, but no. <laughs> and so even trying to, to share that with students and wanting to connect with them, but not just figuring out new ways to connect yeah, with them instead of so and so like Joe, I like what Joe was saying, just giving it to God, like, all right God, you understand everything, you know what's going on, I don't. I can ask a million questions that might that may not help me. And we can do our part, we can help, we can love, but most of all about the students know, hey, we're here for you, we're here for you, call us. Yeah. You know, just just reach out to them, yeah. reach out to them like you're saying, give them a And, and I think Travis, you touched on it. The one thing is that we need to get out of ourselves. In, in, out there, and for the kids to do the same thing, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you come to us, but who's coming to you? Because mm -hmm. there's going to people come to them that won't come to any of us. Right. And yeah. they can minister, and they can be powerful ministers during this time. You know? mm -hmm. Well, this whole sermon has been on prayer. You know, this that's the that's the uh, the main theme, prayer. And so, how to pray in a crisis? Just let me ask you, what is the best answer to prayer you ever received? Wow. I mean, what is the best, like, wow. I mean, I know what happens. <laughs> what is, I'm just, I'm just thinking, like, you know, I was just thinking, what was the best? I've had a lot of neat things happen in, in my own life. I guess we can, I, I was like, okay, well, let's don't go to the old stories. Let's think about something recent, you know. And, uh, I mean, one does pop up, and I want to, you know, I had time to digest this a little bit, but. You know, what is like, um, and out there too, what is, uh, you're watching me on Facebook, watching us on Facebook, Facebook, how, um, what is the best answer to prayer? As you think back right now, you go, what, what, what was the thing, you know, I remember praying about this thing, and, you know, God did come through for me. I mean, it was that, I mean, God really did answer that. Well, why don't you, you know? tell us yours while we're thinking about ours? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's this house right here. We're talking about something that's kind of, current for us as a church and um, we you know we were able to buy six and a half acres out of here and then all of a sudden two months later this house came up available that is two and a half acres that butts up to the six acres point something and so I'm looking at this house and well that's almost 10 acres we gotta get the house I mean we own the whole thing then and so we started and we liquidated everything we had in the bank as a church to buy the six acres so then we're going to the bank, this, that. Long story short, all these doors were shutting, nothing. I mean, it was just shutting down quick. So after about a month of that, I just said, all right, Lord, I guess, you know, if you want us to have it, <laughs> I've done everything I could, I could better do. So it's just totally up to you. So long story short, had a gentleman in the church call out of the blue one day and say, and he was in his 80s, and he calls me kid. He said, hey, kid, what's going on with that house and that piece of property? Long story short, he says, you know you got to get that. I said, I know, but. And uh, he ended up uh, writing the check for it. Answer prayer. You know, and I called my board, my elders, and said, listen, this is what just happened. I think God wants us to have it. I mean, you know, here's a, here's a, a check for a couple hundred thousand dollars. And, that, and what's amazing to me about that is he was able to do that. You and I could not write a check mm -hmm. like that. And then once we told the church we got the house, it was gifted to us. Yeah. Now, as a church, it's it doesn't look as pretty as it does. It, no, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> well, no, and that's it was, I mean, it was to the yeah. point we were trying to decide, do we tear it down and build brand new? This or, it, it was rough. It was rough. <laughs> and... Uh, Man, 
and the people of our church just pull together right. $5, $10, $15, and, and all of that uh, pull together with the time and hours and hours and hours of and volunteer work. Volunteer hours. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. And it, it excites me. And this is this house is like the appetizer of the rest of the, the acreage. Yeah. So I, I'm like, I'm excited. I'm excited to, to yeah. see what... Uh, God has planned for the next. And, and we watched so many people right. rally around the house uh, that year, um, and you know people wrote checks to to uh, to uh, to get the house in shape. Others spent that winter that winter yeah. tons of volunteer hours. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. It was almost like the Amish coming in and doing a barn racing. You know, yeah. it was almost that way. And how God just kind of motivated the hearts of the people in our church to have a heart to work. You know, they saw the vision, they said, let's do it. So anyhow, answer a prayer recently for us as the leadership of the church, and and, uh, and and for us it was that, and it was huge, you know, it was huge for us to realize, you know, that God dropped a series of things, in a, you know, that's beyond our control. It's like you, Joe, it's like, all right, God, it's totally up to you, and all of a sudden we're waiting for God's to start moving real quick, you yeah. know, and so, that was an answer to prayer. We, have, we have a couple online. Trish says her answer to prayer is her son. She says she just told him yesterday that he was the greatest gift God gave to her and that she prayed for several years for him and felt like he was a gift from God. And then Robert said, God sent my wife to me when I was sick and did not think I would survive. And my wife told me, it is not your time yet, and go back to church. And so yeah. that, that is an answer to prayer Absolutely. as well. Yeah. So, thank you. Um, uh, an answer to a prayer that I had, and it's, I guess, kind of recent, but, um, like, all through my life, I never knew what I wanted to be or do in my life, but I knew that I wanted to be a wife and a mom, and to do that, you obviously need to have a husband if you want to be a wife. So, I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm always praying that, and I'm like, God, please let me find someone, and I'm like, okay, Lord, is it that one? Because he's really nice, or blah, blah, blah. You know, this is, is it this one? Is it this one? Is it this one? And um, it was... Um, through the discipleship program that I went to, and um, I watched lots of other people get together and get married, and people who were um, quite a bit younger than me get married. I'm like, God, are you forgetting about me? Like, what in the world? And finally, it was when I, it was literally within the week that I said, Okay, Lord, I'm going to stop looking. I'm going to stop trying to make things happen, or just, you know, be, you know, is it? Is it? Is it, is it? Um, and I'm going to really, whenever you move me where I go next, that's where it's going to be. So I'm going to stop looking. Um, and then within that week, Travis, I was. You know, we were talking, and I was like, oh, maybe. And I'm like, okay, God, no, I'm leading up to you. And just the way that, and I can go on and on about how our story happened and everything. If you want to know, ask me later. But um, it, just the way that he did it um, was in a way that I knew that it was nothing but God that put it, put us together. And, um, and he answered my prayer um, only after I decided that I was done trying to answer my own prayer. And I think... Um, kind of going back to that verse, Jeremiah 29, um, about I have a plan for you, and it's a plan to prosper you, and it's a, it's a good plan, the best plan. So I think if if I trust God that who he is who he says that he is, and that he's going to follow through in his word, and that the Bible, what he says is true, then um, I have to, like, I have to stop and be able to listen to him and stop trying to make my own will happen, and I have to trust that when he says, I have a plan, one, I have to slow down and listen to what his plan is, because if I'm like doing, 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 or looking, 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 or whatever your you know situation may be, if I'm not taking time to slow down and listen to God and get to know his voice, number one, because if I don't know his voice, I won't know it's his, him who's telling me, and two, if I'm too busy and I don't slow down to um, to listen to God and to be and to obey when he tells me to, then I'm, you know, I'm not gonna get anywhere. So, um, yeah. Very good. Joe? Well, we've had a lot of things that happened in our lives, and tragedies and anxieties and stuff like that. And a couple of them came to my mind. One of them just touched me. It's a little heavy, but I'll share it with you. But 18 and a half years ago, my wife and I lost our youngest son. It was a devastating loss. He was 25 years old, and he died. He went in a coma and died, um, and we lost him. And uh, it's been very tough on us, uh, especially on this, uh, because, you know, you, you, when you lose a child, it's hard, and when you lose an older child, it turns out a little harder than younger, and it didn't make sense to me at all related to it. Here, we're, we're, we're trained as school psychologists, 
We haven't got a clue what's going on. Later, <laughs> Darla might be ready to. But we had uh, the funeral in our church there in Miami, and, and uh, I got up to speak that morning. And what I'd done is that when he was in a coma, my brother from up north had come down to be with us and to give us ministry. And so he and I would go and sit with our son uh, during, uh, I think, at the evening, at evening hours and the early mornings when we do a visitor coming later. And I was reading the scripture to him out of Isaiah and a whole bunch of other stuff related to it. <clears throat> and it came back to me that I shared that with the group that came to that funeral that day. And the message that came to me is like, this wasn't for me, Joseph, because there's no way I would have come up with this. But it was Jonah. Not Jonah, Job. It was Job. And Job lost his family. Just totally was taken from him. And he, he made a statement. And I'll probably get it wrong now because I won't quote it right. But the basic thing is, what is yours is yours. You know, and I will still be faithful to you. And I made that statement. I don't know if I believe that at all. I mean, it was just something that came out of me related to it. And since that time, the Lord has says, it was Joseph. And it's something that you needed to do to make that statement. And it's been in me all the whole time. And I've been blessed because I can make that statement. Not because I had it right in my head. Because it wasn't right in my head related to it. And the other issue for us, which is more recent, is the house here in Benita. We lived in Miami for 42 years. That's a long time. We lived in one place. Um, and we, after we retired, God started closing all the doors. It's so crazy because all the friends that we had basically were moving away. They were going to, like, we were not connected. The church we were going to was going shh, sinking down to nothing. Um, and it was like, what's going on? And we, we started looking, 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 and looking all over Florida. We didn't want to leave Florida. We're looking at it. And we found this house over here on the line. And it was a house that the price was unbelievable. We'll Called the realtor and he said, don't touch it with a 10 foot pole. This is a house that, that the sellers are not too well off and they, they're not, they don't deal with people nice. I wouldn't touch it. I'm the, I'm the one that listed it. I know what to So we kept looking, 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 and it would, it, would give, it would go on contract and then the contract would fold. Go on contract and the contract would fold. And so we got a realtor, angel of God, Remember our church here now. That's how we ended up in this church because of her. <clears throat> and she started feeding us different properties. At one time, it was off contract. I got to go in and see the inside of the house. It was not as bad as this one, but it was pretty bad for us. They had wires hanging out the wall. The, the pool was black and green and all this other stuff. I mean, it was really pretty bad shape. But, but Liz loved the house and that. So we kept looking. <clears throat> and so we put a bid down on a house. One Sunday morning, no, after church on Sunday morning, we went to the Springs Church. <laughs> I think it was Springs Church. But we went to the church that morning and we didn't get it. And I said, hmm, you know, we went to church because we went to church, we didn't get it. <laughs> that was not intended. So I said to Debbie, uh, I said, Debbie, I said, you know, keep looking. Remember that house that we saw over there, don't touch that one, because that's we're not supposed to be there. So she calls me up two weeks later. And she says to me, Joe, I got good news and I got bad news. And I said, well, I always go with bad news first. He said, Tell, you told me not to look at that house, you know, over there in Benita and um, in Spanish Wells. Well, the realtor that listed came to me. So, and I said, well, okay, what's the good news? She said, the good news is the seller says they want to sell it to you and to you only. Wow. I said, say what? This is sellers that wouldn't sell it to anybody. It was given to everybody. Mm -hmm. Within two weeks, the contract was signed and done. Uh, and wow. So, I mean, God wanted yeah. us in that house whether we wanted it to be or not. Right. And it, no matter what we were doing, it wasn't going to happen. But, you know, we finally said, whatever. And it happened. And yeah. that's when it happened. Becky says yeah. that several years ago, God turned a rainstorm to come over our crops, to save our crops that was dying without rain. Something we need to get desperate with God for Him to hear our needs. I remember her telling us that story yeah. Yeah. that the that the rain Gail, that the rain turned. And uh, go ahead and answer a prayer. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Gail says, "I agree with you, Robert. I came all the way from the West Coast and I found Springs Church, which I prayed to find a church that was similar to my church in Nevada." Amen. 
So we got a lot of answers in prayer. I know we could go on and on, and it would encourage our faith and build our faith. Let's get into the six things real quickly. Okay. And uh, I wanted to do this as an introduction to prayer and <clears throat> just to kind of, uh, just, to, just to charge our prayer up. In fact, I kind of, when I was going through this, this chapter nine, how six ways to supercharge your prayer life. I kept thinking about supercharging. So let's look at these real quickly out of Daniel chapter 9, his prayer. And the first thing that stuck out, stu stood out to me on your outline is this. Let God speak to me before I speak to him. And I know that's kind of, it's the listening part. And I know that's kind of strange at first. But when you read um, uh, verses 1 and 2 of that chapter, it does talk about how Daniel was in the scriptures. And it says this, I was studying the scriptures. And I learned from the word of God as recorded by Jeremiah the prophet that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. God was speaking to Daniel first. And, and as I've gotten to thinking about that, God always speaks to us first before we respond. I mean, he's always reaching out to us. You know, he, his love, he reached out to us in love before we even had any knowledge of sin or love. But anyhow, I was just saying... How to pray in a crisis. I, for me, I always go to the Word of God before I pray. It's just a habit that I have. For some reason, um, I end my devotional time by prayer. But a lot of times my prayer would be what God has, what I read in the Scriptures that morning. And this is what Daniel was doing. He's studying the Scriptures, and I learn from the Word of God. So how to pray in a crisis where in this coronavirus, I would encourage you, and I'm sure you're doing this, but I would encourage you every single day to get into God's Word and let the Word of God encourage you, speak to you, the promises of God are there. So, studying God's Word and um, and let God speak to you. Any comments on that? I I really like John 15, 7, the second verse that was in there. It starts out, if you stay connected to me and my words remain in your heart, you may ask any request you want in prayer and it will be given to you. And I read that, and I, kind of, I liked it, if you stay connected mm -hmm. to me. And it's like our relationship with God isn't like our phone, where you get down to 1%, you're like, oh, now I need to connect back with God. Yeah. So, and yes, God does recharge us. He gives us that rest we need. That's but right. it says if you stay connected. It doesn't right. mean we connect with God in the morning, and we unplug, and we go our entire day, and then night comes around, and we plug back into God. No, we stay connected during the whole day. We stay in His presence wherever we're at, at work, at home, with friends, with family. We're always in His presence ready to obey what he wants us to do. So I, I like the, the, the analogy of always staying connected with God. And just well, like a cell phone, we leak, it loses power throughout the day. And I tell you, this world drains us. <laughs> yeah, it does. Well, it's interesting, though, because I think a lot of people take the second part of that verse and not the first part of the verse. And they say, you know, well, the Bible says that what you want in prayer and it will be given to you. Mm -hmm. Well, the first part of the verse says, if... If you stay connected to me and, and my words remain in your heart, because if you're connected and his words are in your heart, then you're probably not asking for things that aren't according to his will. Mm -hmm. So when you're connected and, and uh, his, his words are in your heart, then you're pretty on task of what you're asking. Well, you know, for me, as I'm reading the Bible, I might get up in the morning and, you know, I might not feel very spiritual. Really? I get my coffee and everything. <laughs> Until he gets his coffee. And I get my coffee and I'm waking up. And your kiss. And, and a kiss, yeah. And then I get into my devotion. Copy Christ. And then as I go, coffee, no, kiss, coffee, and work. That's, that's the word. And then, um, and then as you're reading through the chapters there, all of a sudden God's speaking to you. And by the time I underline, highlight, I mean, God's speaking to me then I'm, I feel my, my spirit lifted, and then I can go right into prayer. You know, it just supercharges the prayer life, you know, as we, as we listen to God by reading the Word of God first. So, I, you know, as we look at Daniel, we see that he, first of all, uh, let God speak to me before I speak to him, and you do that through the Word of God. And then, uh, and just let me just say this, Daniel, believe it or not, uh, Babylon, we read that he was in Babylon, that's in modern-day Iraq. Just to kind of throw that out, people are wondering where these Bible stories are happening at. Um, Babylon, Iraq, and um, Persia that came in and defeated Babylon 
where Daniel is now, the Persians have gotten this, the Medes and the Persians, that is modern day, modern day Iran. So all the way back here in BC, we see these events taking place, and here we are 3,500, 4,000 years later, all of a sudden these events are taking place right now. I mean, you know, I'm talking about Abraham back in the day too, came out of the Ur of Chaldees, which was modern day Iraq. So anyhow, that's where and, Daniel and all no, this is taking place. There's a, there's a lot of news, not, saying, not much news about the rest of the world, but there is news about Iran being hit mm -hmm. very hard by the coronavirus mm -hmm. yeah. right now. Right. So the whole world's getting hit, especially these areas too. So. And also, before we leave here, it's, it's interesting, 70 years. To the prophet Jeremiah, Israel was supposed to be captive, the Jews, for 70 years. Talks about God's timing. And that's what I had here. Two factors involved, God's timing and my praying. We have not because we ask not. And so we see those two things as timing is a key to a lot of what we're doing, how we're praying and, you know, and what God has. We are just continuously to uh, pray and trust Him. And the timing of God is just such, it's so critical. I, I see that more and more uh, as I get older. The timing of God, God's timing is perfect. And when it happens, Put your seatbelt on. You can, you're gonna, I mean, all of a sudden, everything takes place. You see the timing of God. You know, it's, it's interesting, though. This is a little twist, and I don't mm -hmm. want to get too offline. But if, if you think about the fact that Israel was in captivity for 70 years, yeah, and they're going to get released from that captivity, and they're going to be able to go back to Israel and to Jerusalem and all that stuff. We've been in this two months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got this antsy thing, let's get back, let's yeah, get back. Right. And I'm thinking, y'all better realize <laughs> that God's plan is God's plan that's right. and his timing. Yeah. And what he wants to take place, as we talked about earlier, yeah. is related to what we do related down right. there. And of course, our prayers are extremely important. And God hears our prayers, but at the same time, it's still going to be whose plan? Right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's right. plan. Yeah. Well, let's go to the second one. Focus my attention on God and as you're reading through Daniel's prayer, we see in verse 3, it says, So I turn my face to the Lord, seeking Him. And, um, uh, you know, I want you to circle that phrase, turning my face to God, seeking Him. That's giving your attention. Um, you know, one of the most um, uh, highest gift that you can give somebody is giving that person your attention as they're talking. Don't you hate sometimes we're having cell, you know, we go out for dinner and the kids are this like this on their cell phones. They were, you know, and you're trying to talk to them and they're going, they're not, no, you don't have their attention. So that's why, yeah, yeah in our house, I mean, the phones go, the phones go away right. for dinner. Exactly. Yeah. So the highest gift you can give somebody is their, is your attention to them. And that's what God is saying here about seeking Him as we... A lesson focus. to couples. Mm -hmm. When you're having a disagreement, which Liz and I never do, just yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> What will happen often for us is when we are having difficulty relating, we won't look at each other. Yeah. <laughs> and you know at that point in time, you're not connecting. Yeah. And what I've learned in 100 years of marriage... <laughs> well, 52 years. Shut up, Joe. She's not listening. It's, the, it's not time to cover. Right. And it's so hard for me because I want to keep running my yap. <laughs> and it doesn't work. Sometimes I'll say, are you listening to me? And he'll say, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. There's a, there's a big difference right. between listening and hearing. That's right. But I think that sometimes, but even with God, we're focusing my attention on God. You know, sometimes we as children say, are you listening to me? And he's, and he, like you, says, all right, Angie, Angelia, or whatever, if you would just shut up for a minute, you can yeah. listen to me as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you, you had said something in the sermon that really hit me. You said, hearing from God is a gift. And sometimes I take advantage of that gift, and I don't really view it as a gift. And I'm like, if, 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 if. Travis or whoever, somebody would give me a really awesome gift, and it's like the perfect gift, something I always wanted, but I just left it wrapped up and I just let it set. 
Like that would be one, I'm sure whoever gave me that gift would feel really upset, but two, I'm missing out on something huge. So if I don't use the gift of, if I don't choose to slow down or unwrap that gift um, and hear God and, and allow God to speak to me, then I'm missing out on a huge gift that he has. You know, I'm not, you know, he's right. probably sad, feeling sad that I'm not listening to him because he has so he knows how good the gift is. But also I'm totally missing out on the sure. best gift I could ever get. So, yep. And that seeking God, you see that Daniel did it three times a day. You know, yeah. they talk about going after God three times a day. Um, in fact, I was just thinking about this. Daniel, very few people in Scripture had a clean uh, bill of health as far as no blemish on them. And Daniel's one of those people. We don't find it. Yeah. We don't find anything in Scripture that this guy got off on a crooked path. It was like he was like the Billy Graham of the day, you know, <laughs> trying to dig up dirt on Billy Graham. I'm, you know, but he was squeaky clean, and I think a lot of it was if you had a habit of seeking, I mean, you're, you're seeking God three times a day. No wonder this guy has so much wisdom and God pouring his strength and his power. And I would look up, uh, there's a lot on seeking in the Word of God. In fact, on your outline it says Luke 12, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God before anything else, and all these things will be added uh, to you. So the key uh, in a crisis now, man, I would, I would turn my face to God in the middle of a crisis. That's what Daniel did. He sought God. I mean, he ratcheted up, you know, and seeking God in a crisis, uh, during a crisis. So I think seeking is one. Yeah, I, one thing, one of those extra verses that you mentioned, we didn't read it, was Proverbs eight seventeen. the second part of it says, those who search will surely find me. Mm -hmm. And I like that. Like, we can go to God knowing that we're going to find him. It's not like he's, yeah. oh, where, where's God? Is he, yeah. he going to hear me? Right. Like, if we search him, we will find him. And I, I think, think the thing for me is that when we're looking at this, we, we don't know how long this is going to last. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we're going to be going through. Um, I am anticipating, sadly, that there will be people that are going to get into some real serious problems. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking some serious problems. We're talking economic, economic just emotional, a yeah. whole bunch of domino effect that's going to happen. Yeah. And this goes back to seeking God's thing yeah. at that time. So the message to us now is we may be okay for the moment. Yeah. But don't think it's going to remain this way. Right. Think that we got to put right. this into our hearts. Keep and it just in prayer. Keep it in prayer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Which goes to the next thing, the s demonstrate my seriousness. Daniel uh, fasted. And, um, and it has the word fasting in there. And, uh, and Jesus once said, um, this kind does, uh, it can only happen through prayer and, you remember that scripture? And fasting. Right. And it's almost like, you know, Daniel included fasting in this moment of crisis. You know, how to pray the crisis, he added that, that, that little bit of fasting, that, that bit of fasting. And really, why fast? God, I am super serious about this. It's it's something about fasting that just kind of what we call crucifying the flesh, you know. And instead of eating breakfast, you're fasting breakfast or fasting lunch or fasting dinner. You know, in the Bible days, when it talks about a day, a daily fast, it was from six in the morning to six at night. That was a day in Scripture. That was a day, you know. And then they would eat after six in the evening, you know, as a daily fast. And so, um, but they, you know, they would fast daily, or you might want to fast maybe a whole day. But I have found in my own life when I added fasting to my spiritual disciplines for whatever was taking place in my life, it just seemed like it got me in line. It crucified the flesh. Sorry about that. Turn your cell phones off. Thank you. <laughs> it crucifies the flesh, and um, and it allows God gets you more in tune with the Lord. Well, I you think know. it's interesting, not only fasting without food, but there's been a forceful fast for us. Mm -hmm. There's fasting without a lot of shopping. Mm -hmm. There's fasting mm -hmm. without entertainment. There's fasting without um, just a lot of things of our normal, everyday life. Fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? that's right. I mean, it, it's been so when all of a sudden, all of those things that are taking your time, not just food, all of those things that are taking your time, God says, stop. And, yeah. okay, use this time, use this time to seek me and use this time. And uh, perfectly with the coronavirus, it is, it, it is a good time to seek the Lord when you're not able to fish. Yeah, exactly, Joe. You know, in, the, in the past, when you've taught on fasting, 
who've done a really good job and didn't have time to mm -hmm. bring it out here. And I just want to say something quickly to the people listening to us today. Remember, in fasting, number one, do it in, in the spirit of the Lord. Number two, do it in relation to your physical health. Mm -hmm. There's some people have to be sure. careful about right. not checking in certain amounts of food. At the same time, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't look for a way to fast, and you just indicated some of the magic that we could Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So we see that, and then we also see number five, thank God for his love and promises. And we see that in verse 9, where, where, where Daniel in his prayer said, I said, Lord, you are a great and awesome God. You're always... You always fulfill your promises. You always fulfill your promises of constant love to those who love you and keep your commandments. Um, and then in verse 9, uh, even though we rebelled against you, you are merciful and forgiving God. In other words, Daniel was reminding himself of the goodness, the awesomeness of God, even though he was in his late 80s during this time. Daniel has gone through three empires. Babel, I mean, uh, two empires, three kings, but Nebuchadnezzar, then his son Belshazzar, and then the Medes and the Persians come in, and now he's in his 80s. And so he's been captive. He was, he was taken captive in Daniel chapter 1 when the Babylonians came in under Nebuchadnezzar as a 15-year-old boy, they were saying, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all those young people there. They were young then. And uh, so he's been in, in Iran or Iraq for all these years now. But yet, he still had an attitude of gratitude. Thank you, God. In the midst of the crisis, you are a good God. And I think that gets us over. That gives us a spiritual edge over people that do not have a relationship with God that in the middle of the cancer, in the middle of the coronavirus, in the middle of the uh, finances dwindling, in the middle of all that, in my heart, I can say you are a good God. And I know you're going to get us through. I might not understand how, but Lord, in my spirit and my heart. And that will, an attitude of gratitude will take you such a long way, you know, as believers in God. Yeah. I've had times in which I'm just so overwhelmed. And in many senses, depressed and really down. Um, and God does some strange things to me. And you all know I'm a little wacky to start with. But um, more than once, I've been driving home from work and my work was like, you know, like and I, and half an hour, 45 minutes from the house, you know, an hour some days. Remind me of traffic, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. that. And all of a sudden, God says, I want you to thank me for everything. And I said, okay, I'll thank you for the good stuff. He said, no, I didn't say just for the good stuff. I want you to thank me for everything. So I started pouring my heart out. I had the windows up because I needed to do that so nobody see me. And I would start saying, God, thank you. And then I say, thank you, God, for how terrible I feel. Thank you, God, for all the stuff that's been going on. Thank you, God, for what's occurring. Thank you, God. And by the time I got home, my spirit was completely lifted. And I felt the spirit of God moving in me. But I had to thank him for everything. And so we need to be thanking him for this coronavirus. Bobby Bauman yeah. says, thanking God for all that I have. Love this scripture, Norma says. Um, so we want to thank Susan and Larry. You're watching there. Psalms 27, Susan says, My heart has heard you say, Come and talk with me. And my heart responded, Lord, I am coming. So that is uh, some good things there. I think Joe's right. We have to be thankful even in the rough times. And, uh, and, sometimes, and that's when we don't feel like being thankful. You know, yeah. you know we, we're, we don't feel like being thankful for the coronavirus, but we are thankful for the millions of people that are uh, hearing the gospel online. Some people that wouldn't tune in. And we're thanking God for the extra time to, to be still and hear God's voice. So there are some things about this coronavirus that we can be thankful for. And just remind us that this is not heaven. This is earth. And it's broken. We live in a broken world. Yeah. People say, why did God do this? God didn't do this. You know, God didn't start this. We are living in a, we got a free will. Man has a free will. And God has allowed us to operate. And that free will, we make terrible decisions and good decisions. And uh, this virus, all that's happened, we're still trying to get our arms around it, where it came from, and, and, and the meaning behind all that. But you know what? God is still in control. And um, although we live in a broken
broken world, there's wars and there's persecution and there's mayhem because we have wickedness and people, we, have, we don't have good people uh, that, that, that are in the world that causes that. But we as believers in the midst of all that, we can thank God. Yeah. We can thank God. It's almost like, remember Corey Ten Boom when she was, uh, that, that story we said a couple weeks ago? Thank God for the fleas. Thank God for the fleas. <laughs> she couldn't understand that. You know, her sister says, Corey, thank God for the fleas. Why am I not thank God for stinking fleas in the barracks? And then all of a sudden they discovered later on they could do all the prayer meetings they wanted. The guards didn't come in here. Why? Because of those crazy fleas. Yeah. And she realized, well, thank God for the fleas, even though they're itchy and biting. And, but, you know, it's just, you know, how we look at it. So anyhow, thank God for it. And then lastly, because we're wrapping up here, I confess my I humbly confess my sins. And that's what Daniel did. And you see the bulk of scripture there I gave how, how Daniel humbled himself. And he confessed his sins. He put himself part of the children of Israel, part of them rebelling against God. The reason why they were here in Babylon is because of their rebellion against God. And God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in. And, and, and it causes, you know, disasters and crisis causes us to go to God. We saw that in 9-11. When 9-11 hit, when we were pastoring at a church, people came that night by the scores to pray in the church. And churches were that way all over the country. Yeah. You know, when disasters and crisis happens. And we see an uptick even now across America, an uptick of, of, of and more of a God consciousness now. People are, are reaching out to God because of it. But we humble ourselves. Yeah, for I thought it was interesting in Daniel 9, 13 and 14, it says, We kept on sinning, never giving you a second thought, oblivious to your clear warnings. So you had no choice to let disaster loose on us since we persistently and defiantly ignored you. I'm not saying us individually as, as Christians or people, but we can see things that uh, there are uh, certain organizations and things rising up specifically being defiant to God. Mm -hmm. I mean, we heard uh, some people in government saying, God's not changing this. God's not doing this. Well, or or they're being very, very defiant. And so I said, when when Daniel was praying for the sins, he was saying, he was praying, confessing the sins of the nation. And so I think it's an, important for us to pray for our nation. We, Lord, have sinned against you. And and, and pray and ask forgiveness for our sins as, mm -hmm. as a whole people. Right. No, it isn't just our nation. Right. right. It's the world. The world. The world. You're the world, right, Joe. The whole world is turned on God. And I'm telling you, when I went back and read that passage again, Russ, out of that oh, passage, Daniel, that day? Oh, this, out of Daniel uh -huh. 9, I'm thinking, he wasn't pulling any punches. No, I mean, he laid it out there and said, mm -hmm. we have really messed up yeah. bad. Yeah. And let me get this straight. We messed up really bad, God. Yeah. And, and, and we're not asking because of anything we got that you would, right. you would save us. Right. We're asking because of your right. mercy that you would save us. And, and you know, so, Eric, and, and I noticed this talk when you're talking about when we humbly admit that, like you just said, Joe, God's not the guy, yeah, okay, now, now you finally realized it. You're in restriction now. <laughs> you know, and all of a sudden the punishment's going to come, but whenever we humbly confess, yeah. every time God shows forgiveness, mercy, grace, Every time. That's his response when we say, God, I screwed up. In fact, that's why I put the word uh, confess in the Hebrew or in the Greek. In the Greek, the word from the, in the Greek when we say we confess is the Greek word homo lagio. Homo lagio. Two words in the Greek. Homo, where we get the word homosexual, homo sapien, homogenized. It means same. Homo means same. And then Logio means to speak. So you put those two Greek words together and, and we get the word confess. And what it means is this. I, I'm in agreement to what God is saying. In other words, I see God. You said this is sin. I'm, I confess. I'm in agreement that that is wrong. I'm in agreement that I screwed up. Or it can be in a positive way. I confess the word. I'm in agreement to your word. That blessings and this and that. I, you know, can come into my life. So there's two words when you use when you use that word confess there. So anyhow, and God's response was He sent the angel Gabriel, and uh, 
You know what happens? We got Nehemiah and Ezra as a result of this. Because what happens is that the king of Persia, Darius, says to Nehemiah, you want to know where the chronological story is? Daniel. And then go to Nehemiah after that, and you can see the answer. After the seven years is up, Nehemiah gets fired up. And Nehemiah goes to, Dan, to, to, to Darius, the, uh, the, the, um, king. the king, and he allows them to go to Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the wall. That's the Paul Harvey, the, the rest of the story. The Paul Harvey is uh, yeah. re re Nehemiah next. Yeah, re re <laughs> Nehemiah and Ezra. Both of those go right after this, just to kind of give you... It's not that way in the Bible, the chronological that way, but that's where the sequence of events take place. Yeah. So, but you can go ahead. Any closing remarks? Yeah, I think the last that? scripture you've got here is very, very common. Oh, yeah. The one out of Second Chronicles says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves mm -hmm. and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. And that's the issue. That's the issue. Heal this world. That's right. That it will turn to its sect. And I had one little thing I heard this week just to share with you. Uh, I don't know where I heard it, but it was somebody was talking about the word coronavirus and what it came from, what it meant. And if you look at it, it it's all related to in the microscopic view of what that thing looks like. You've seen it on yeah. TV where you got the little spikes on it. It's literally crown of thorns. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. And you know yeah. the reference to the crown of thorns for us as Christians. This is the crown of thorn we're facing. And of course, there's a movement now on the 714. You know, at 714 in the morning and 714 at night, churches and, and all around the world, there, it, you know, there's this movement, 714 movement. It's coming out of Second Chronicles 714, yeah. where people all over the world at 714 a.m. in the morning and 714 p.m., People are gathering around the world doing this. If my people are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray, seek, turn from their wicked ways, mm -hmm. then God will forgive and healing will take place. You know, you know who can only do this? God's people. If my people. If my people. If my people. Yeah. So we have this movement called the 714 movement, which is kind of popular now around mm -hmm. the globe. So let's pray. And uh, I don't know what your needs are, but we want to close with prayer. Tomorrow we have prayer uh, at the porch. And um, the, um, Angelina and Stephanie will be uh, will be doing that. Where we actually take the needs of the church and we pray over them. So and that and we get a good response from that. So if you have any prayer requests, make sure you call us. Um, you know, and let us um, yeah. kind of pray. Or you can you can also comment right yeah. on this link, yeah. and we can go back and then That's right. uh, later on this afternoon we'll put on a prayer on the porch uh, link to to put your specific prayer request. And we really do pray. There's some women that come. We're social distancing. The rocking chairs are six feet apart on the porch. <laughs> and we pray for the specific needs in yeah. um, the church and our family. And, 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 and if you want to come out and do that, like I said, it's a beautiful scenery here. And yeah. come out and, and do that. And, and join, join us. It. Join us in prayer. You're welcome to do that. Um, the, the churches are allowed to meet as long as the social distancing is ordered. And we do have the rocking chairs split out. Six feet apart. So if you'd like to come and yeah. pray, you're welcome to come. Amen. Joe, we want to continue to pray. Sure. God, will continue to yeah. bless you and uh, treat you and you know touch your touch, touch your life and um, and just continue to pray. Um, it looks like uh, we had a meeting with the mayor and this uh, city attorney, the uh, city manager, and also the, the event coordinator, the parks and rec. And it looks like we're gonna they're gonna keep the parks shut at least it looks like through May. Yeah. So it looks like we're gonna continue to do what we're doing like this and, and through May, you know, meeting together. So um, unless some things change drastically, but that seems to be yeah. uh, what they're is asking us to do. 2020. Uh, 2020. <laughs> 2020. <laughs> we would also like to continue to ask prayer for. Uh, for our land, for yeah. for the preparation of our land, the planning of our land, yeah. Yeah. financial miracle for our, for our land, and I say our, not our, our as a as a yeah. church, as a community. Yeah. God has big plans for this ten acres, and uh, keep that in prayer. Yeah, keep keep His direction. Yeah. 
And so, Joe, would you mind taking us to the throne room? And, and those of you that are out there, if you would mind, just take your cell phone as a point of contact. Hold it in your hand. That would be an agreement with Susan and Trish and, and uh, Susan, Su Susanna and Terry and others that are that I don't see, <laughs> that, uh, that I see right here, but there's others that are on there. So let's be in agreement with all that, and let's join Joe as he closes us out in prayer. Father, we come to you just humbled that you love us so much. No matter how far we've messed up and, and not done right, and we as a, as a people have fallen from you, and we seek you, Father. We come today asking you to fear all, fear, fill our prayer life with with humbleness, asking our your life to be guided by you and be touched, and that our hearts will be moved, O oh Lord, to be your witness, uh, to bring hope and peace and joy and purpose into the lives of the people that we communicate with and connect, how God puts us together. And we're not doing it face-to-face, -to -face, but we're still connecting. So, Lord, may we just be filled with that joy. Touch those in great need. Help them to know that you're with them and you're a part of them and that you love them and you will take care of them no matter what they face down the road, no matter what we go through. Bless the efforts, Lord, that we as a church uh, reach out and that this entire process that we're going through will be one that will crystallize in our hearts, that your uh, vision and your direction and your power and your strength and your guidance will be upon us. Yes. Bless each and every one, Lord, that is a part of your kingdom. Uh, and may your kingdom be seen and may it, the light just shine like all get out in this amazing, horrible darkness that the brightness will just come blasting out, that they will see you and see your power and your glory. Bless us now this day, Father, in your Son's holy and wonderful and blessed name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. Thank you for being with us. We love you. And uh, we have s some great people in our church. Our church family, and so. Uh, and even those of uh, you that are watching that you're not part of our church family, yes. we're blessed that you were able to uh, join us for That's coffee, right. Christ, exactly. and conversation. That's today. right. And it might be Tuesday, uh, and, uh, it might be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. You might be seeing this, but we're glad that you tuned in. God bless you, and we'll be in touch with you this week. Be strong and be healthy, and uh, keep the faith. Amen. <laughs>